Hi Nassim, um, just checking my audio. Is my audio video all functioning fine? Can you hear me? Hi Nassim, I'm just checking my audio and video. Uh, so, are you able to hear me? And can you see me? Yes. Yes, I am. Wonderful. Yes, Very I can. But your voice is cracking. My voice is cracking. No, no, not now. I thought you speaks spoke something. That's why. I thought, no. Um, I'll wait. There is six more minutes for the session to start. So let's give everyone time to join and then I'll kick start sharp at one. Hi, Bharat. Nisha here. Hi, Nisha. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. I can. Okay. So I guess until the rest of the cohort joins, uh, why not start with introduction? I don't know most of you people. So uh, in whatever order you want, perhaps a quick intro on what's your motive to join this, what you're looking for. Nasim, you want to go first? Yep. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, My name is Nasim Sayyid. So uh, I joined this session. I actually really wanted to learn uh, in uh, in something in codings, and I think this is a good start to add uh, into my uh, you know knowledge. And then uh, this I can also apply into my current uh, 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 business. Thanks, Nasim. Thanks. Uh, Nisha, you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, so hello everyone. I am Nisha Gulumkar, and uh, uh, Bharat. I'm sorry. I just missed uh, the. But you are you asking for introduction, right? Because um, yeah, 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 just while we wait for others to join, okay. I think. Uh, yeah. So at present, I am working with Capgemini uh, from Pune office, and uh, I have six years of experience in mainframe development. 
and uh, why i am here because uh, i am you know always as uh, if if you know mainframe is kind of <coughs> legacy system and uh, this machine learning iot this always uh, i find these options you know very uh, kind of you know new thing for me so i that is why i am here thanks nisha anyone else uh, no particular order so whoever wants to go next please feel free the mics are open for everyone Hi everyone. Good morning. This is Pranit here. Hello. Yeah, Pranit, I can hear you. Hey, hi, I, hi everybody. Uh, I used to work with Wipro for past eight years. Uh, recently, I resigned from uh, Wipro Technologies. I used to work as an Oracle uh, DBA. I just want to change my uh, career into machine learning. So I just thought of a give a trial so that I can. start my new career in this machine learning so hope i'll you'll help me out on this sure thank you you're welcome So, Bharat, this uh, one o'clock session and one thirty uh, session both will be same, right? One can join either of either of them. Oh no! Uh, I think it's the same session. It's just because Zoom places a hard stop at forty minutes. I'm still using a free version of Zoom. Reason being, the paid version of Zoom has a limitation of how much of recording I can upload, and I think okay. I've already hit the four GB mark. so if i upload anything more they start charging me heavily for it that's why i had to shift to a free zoom this week i plan to offload all that content there and have one seamless long session instead of having two links but for today i think the idea was first half an hour i talk about the basic objectives and then next half an hour i throw it for question and answers okay okay But so uh, was was that sessions. confusing? I, I'm sorry, I didn't think it through. So, did that come across as a little confusing on which one to join? Basically, what uh, I thought of like the, both are same session because of the participant number of participants. You have made two sessions. Okay. Uh, uh, probably, Bharat, uh, you you might want to you know start with. maybe explaining that for a minute and then any anyone has any question on that it will be clarified if you know it's if if it is confused confusing for uh, you know any of the participants this what i think. sure nasim i'll do that hi parat shiv here hi shiv how are you i'm you good might... how are you you might want to quickly do a one minute intro of yourself yes yes yeah uh, hi all uh, my name is uh, shiraj um, i'm part of uh, northern trust uh, i'm with northern trust from almost 8 years i have experience in fund accounting and uh, managing the project um, and worked in the excels and uh, wanted to learn on machine learning and huh, that pretty much bharat thanks sir yeah uh i think uh, as participants join i want to kick start it and so welcome to uh, there is so would you mind if i keep this hovering here because i don't know for some reason people are uh, going to the waiting room and not directly admitted so i have to push them into this meeting from the waiting room i wouldn't know so i'll keep checking this window don't find it annoying next time onwards it might be a little more smoother uh with that uh hi my name is bharat uh 
over last two years, I have been trying to learn and as well as teach some of the things which I am attempting over next few months. Idea tip basically for me to start this session was when I started learning, I had some challenges. It's a vast, vast field. First, I was a little directionless. Second, there is so much material. There is so much of uh, information out there on internet that I often tended to fall down rabbit holes where I am constantly going off track. So it, it all of this, what I guess led to was elongation of what could have been done faster. So I put together for myself something like a course, which I believe if I would have gotten, my learning would have been much more fruitful and much more faster. With that, I put together a course which I thought I should have done in when I started learning. I put this course to a couple of universities. One of the university I was affiliated with uh, started a pilot and that was a paid course. So I did that for four odd batches. I never took more than 15 to 20 people. So I am severely impaired in that uh, manner that uh, this would be the largest cohort I would be ever attempting. Uh, with that, I want to start with objectives. What, what are the objectives of session? What are you signing up for? And in return, what is that you might expect of it? So basically, machine learning is an intersection of multiple fields. It would be your domain knowledge to start with, whatever domain it might be. It would involve a lot of maths and stats. Uh, don't worry too much about these things. Uh, we will take it one step at a time, small baby steps, though firm and irreversible. The third domain is computer science. So usually understanding of programming and understanding of domain knowledge gives you little ability to automate those small things, do things in much faster and much smarter way. Historically, ability to understand maths and statistics combined with your domain knowledge allows allowed you to do certain traditional type of statistical researches. What has emerged in past couple of years is intersection all of these allowing. Uh, I'll, I'll keep monitoring the chat once a while. I won't always have a look at this. But uh, yes, next time onwards, the sessions would be recorded because next time onwards, I'll be moving from uh, to a paid uh, Zoom channel that allows me to record these. But today, this is an introductory section. I just wanted to talk about what is the program structure and hence today's will not be recorded. Um, yeah, so I was talking about machine learning. It is an intersection of all these fields where you learn a little bit of coding, you learn quite a bit of statistics and mathematics involved in this programming. And finally, you can use these techniques to solve quite a lot of problems which you might encounter in your domain. Now, my hope with this module is to, one, teach enough of Python. When I say enough, what I mean is it, it's really a vast field. Python can be used for, it's one of the most uh, powerful languages out there. It is used in multiple domains to create uh, your own applications, websites, to very complicated things like entire uh, flight management system in most of the countries. The backbone of it is Python. It is used to control mainframes. It is used to do quite a lot of things. My aim with this course would be to teach you enough Python to be able to do this machine learning, which the ultimate aim is. Second objective is to have enough grasp of statistics and mathematics. Now you can use all the algorithms I would cover just by remembering or just by practicing these algorithms. However, my hope is to teach enough of these statistics so that intuitively you understand what these algorithms are doing and instill enough confidence that you are able to write your own algorithms instead of relying on 
uh, out of box algorithms already provided by quite a lot of libraries uh, this won't be like a typical mathematics or a statistical class so these would be one step at a time we'll try to understand the core concepts we'll try to break it down into a plain english so my attempt would be to teach it in a way as if i would teach it to a, a very young participant uh, one of the youngest participants in this cohort is a 12 year old person so my aim is to teach it to that level break it down and provide intuitive understanding of this and once we reach this phase i think my hope is to enable you to apply these things not only learn these things theoretically but you should be able to apply these onto the problems in whatever area that you are working and uh, through this course you will also interact with quite a lot of real world problems data sets to these problems are already available and made free by quite a lot of universities quite a lot of charity organizations and quite a lot of organizations are increasingly moving at public participation of their problem solving in sense a uh, lot of companies put their problems out there on multiple platforms with a hope that others can solve it for them and they often attach quite a good uh, handsome amount of rewards to anyone who would, is able to solve those problems so later during the course we'll look at picking up couple of those problems going through it live and then seeing how much we have learned that would be a good gauge of how far we have come in our understanding of machine learning concepts and then you should be able to take these and apply these to solve problems in whatever domain you are working ultimately you should be able to at the end of all of it uh, i'm looking at around 6 months you should be able to have your own portfolio it might be in form of a website or whatever medium you choose but you should be able to demonstrate the projects your understanding on your ability to solve problems uh, on any platform which is public facing and uh, using this people can see what your understanding of machine learning is and the most important part of and one of my uh, favorite objectives was we should do it in a fun way it i did not want it to be in a very academic fashion where we pick up a topic go through it and then that, that leave it at that i wanted to solve some fun problems so on the way when we are learning statistics statistics can be a really dry subject so i wanted to take some real problem like uh, recently in we put a problem out to the world that uh, some of their in we is one of the largest alcohol manufacturing firms across europe uh, they had put a problem that their they have a lot of wastage of bottles in their manufacturing a plant because uh, a lot of these bottles break during the packaging process so they wanted us understanding of what is causing this break now this is a very good statistical problem and i hope that i can pick up problems like these and then break it down to explain all the statistical concepts and that would be my approach so when i take up any topic i would want to take a problem and then break it down into plain simple english language which we all might understand and then apply statistical concepts so that our foundations and understanding is formed those were the objectives which i had set for myself when i thought i should do this course um the way i wanted to structure this program was break it down into chunks which are independent in themselves however each of these chunks would allow you to have those formative building blocks it will allow you to have those mental models which you can reuse in any of the problem solving so i've structured it sequentially in the same way i am of the opinion that ideal size of these chunks should be a month because it's a weekly session i would be doing and it would span around 6 months now in these 6 months uh, what i hope is to cover all the objectives which i have uh, spoken about so first one month will be purely spending on how to use python for data science now here i would not be talking about python language in general i would be talking about how do we utilize this tool 
so we our our attempt would not be to understand this tool our attempt would be how can we best utilize these tools because each of these things is a vast field in itself so you take python you take mathematics you take statistical each of these are a deep enough topics to spend years together mastering it but we need to just learn enough of it to be able to solve some good problems meanwhile having fun at solving these problems so one month i'm hoping that i would start with python and how do we use it for data science at the end of this one month you should be able to use python to read any sort of data now one of the gaps when i was learning it was most of the courses out there what they teach is how to use python read the data and this data was always very clean provided in excel sheets provided in tab delimited format or very clean format but when i started working on data science at the place where i work 90% of the times i was stuck at this first phase where how to read this data because data is in in real life would never be clean would never be available easily you'll always struggle to clean up this data even to read this data into a format which is workable so my attempt would be to do cover all those at the end of this one month you should be able to take any data in any format and then load it onto python to be able to start working on it uh, the formats might be web scraping might be as easy as we'll start simple with reading excel files and go all the way to complicated things like reading of a live twitter feed analyzing any of the comments that are posted on facebook and then once we load it see how we can analyze that so focus first month would be just learning python as a tool to extract data and be able to manipulate data in whatever way we want you should have these core skills of ability to read data and thoroughly understand whatever data you would be working with at the after this uh, it would have another one month on statistics now as i said it won't be pure statistics it won't be just statistics we would be taking problems loading those problems using our understanding from month one uh, month first so we will use python take all this data and apply statistical models for it, on it so we will take some real life problems one each week to understand one concept uh, i'm hoping to take a little complicated process or a problem and then break it down so how does a golf manufacturer come up with optimal size of a ball how 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 does a diagnostic center determine what level of serum constitutes you having covid or you not having covid things like this how do doctors in general look at x rays and determine what amount of intervention is required now increasingly machines are taking over and uh, only last year we there was a big news that now the ability of machines to predict what is a malign tumor versus a what is a benignant tumor has surpassed any available human knowledge in history so almost most of the doctors now have these tools available to them and it vastly simplifies quite a lot of problems we'll take some of these problems apply statistical models and then see how we understand the uh, statistics of it my hope with this month is first cement practice whatever you have learned in month 1 uh, month 1 which is read data slice dissect understanding of data and then apply statistical modeling on it so here you would ingrain quite a lot of understanding on how do you test data how do you gather meanings of uh, meanings of whatever data sets you are working on how do you infer relationships between whatever data set you are working with third month we enter into our first foray into actual machine learning now by now you would already understand everything you would need to know about machine learning as you would see in this month third month is machine learning is not a new concept it it would be something like a mix between statistics and our emerging uh, 
way of programming. So statistics has always been there since historical ages and machine learning is really a subset of that. Combined with the breakthroughs made in last few years in programming and in hardware uh, computational part, we are able to now exploit these and then this is, this is called machine learning. <coughs> so think of machine learning as a way of problem solving, albeit in a different way. A traditional way approaches of coding a solution to a problem involves multiple steps and imagine it as a series of decision trees. So you would have, you would have to quote things like if this, then take this action. If something else, take other action. And this is taught to a computer and computer follows that same decision taking format. The machine learning is ideologically a vast, uh, a little break away from that fact. So in machine learning, the approach we are going to take is instead of telling a computer what to do, we would teach it what is our objective from it. So think of it as uh, we have a problem. We understand what a solution might look like. And we really don't care about how is our objective met. What we want to learn here is we want to teach a computer that this is the data set I have. This is the objective I want to achieve. Now take these away and do something with it and come tell me back how have you solved this. So this is often uh, called software 2.0. It's a huge difference between uh, software 1.0 where Typical coding practices are employed, decision trees are built, and a computer takes those decisions exactly as how you would have coded. In month three, our aim would be to learn that software 2.0. This type of coding would involve you teaching a computer only the objective. You give computer a data set, you tell computer what is that you are trying to achieve, and these computer programs they would go ahead and do something called machine learning, come back with you and tell you how they have solved a problem. So you would see a term before machine learning, it's called supervised. Now supervised machine learning is how we start. It typically means that you would, you would have some reference data. So imagine you're trying to teach your outlook inbox, what is spam, what is not. So you would have already a set of data which will which you would know what a spam looks like. So in a way that you're supervising how a computer is learning. The by end of third month, my hope is you all are very comfortable uh, with this method of thinking and applying it in whatever domain you work, where you have a problem, you understand what is a solution what might a solution look like and then you pass it on to an algorithm or a computer and they do the heavy lifting of arriving at a solution. At the end of third month, uh, we would move on to ensemble techniques. Ensemble techniques are where you combine multiple of machine learning models and you let other algorithms built on top of these to choose which one is the best. Now this is a second order magnitude of machine learning where you have multiple ways of multiple systems learning by themselves or multiple algorithms attempting same problem. However, there is a master algorithm choosing from which to take. Uh, imagine this just like a committee of people, a lot of people would have their own opinion on how to solve a problem. And then there would be a sort of supervision on take a generic opinion and then decide whether you want to take a popular vote or you then deciding which one is the best. And this is often employed in industry uh, as a layer above supervised machine learning. So for fourth month, we are going to uh, dive deep into these ensemble techniques. Most of the competitions out there on Kaggle are one. So in fact, the statistics show it's available on Kaggle. 96% of all Kaggle wins are using ensemble techniques. Fifth month, we are going to move to something called an unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning, oh, this is the, we're reaching a half an hour limit. So you would have to 
select the link to when this session ends that's where i would start taking question and answers so unsupervised learning is where you don't have any prior understanding of a problem this is where you just have raw problems data sets and you throw it at an algorithm and let algorithm tell you what it understands so this is where you identify patterns from data and you use once you understand patterns then you apply all supervised machine learning and ensemble techniques which you have already learned to arrive at a solution to problem and then we conclude the first part of this series by diving into some very advanced concepts like feature engineering model selection uh, these are typically how to work on your data to make it more efficient how to do the same things which you have learned in past 5 months in a very very efficient and fast way how to deploy these on cloud and how to be able to really use it to the problems at your workspace this would be the first chunk of it and the way i am planning it is on every saturday one and half hour half one hour would be covering the topic 30 minutes for any question and answer immediately following the session on sunday i would share all the material some notebooks and some links for you to go through for next 5 days i will try recording these sessions however i'll have to figure out the logistics of it after this for the people who really are interested is the second chunk this is where is the state of art in industry so these are topics which are very emergent which uh, help uh, so deep learning is used by tesla to have self driving cars computer vision natural language processing is used extensively by google in their translation programs recommendation system is backbone of all the software which amazon even zoom uses netflix is built on recommendation system so the core backbone of entire netflix is this recommendation system these are state of art and are still emerging these are some serious topics to cover but i'm i'm hopeful that we'll have fun learning these these require some very powerful systems to be run on but we now have uh, tools like google collaboratory which allows you to do these on any system that you might have so all you would require is a basic pc it requires quite a lot of appetite to learn these because these are going to be quite involved sessions but uh, it's not uh, impossible we are doing it's doable uh, almost all of it is still work in progress uh, a lot of very smart people are still working making these better but this learning community is a very open very nice community lot of research paper in fact all the research papers in all these areas are available free and anyone can pick these up talk to the authors and most of the time i uh, i've never faced a scenario where i have read a paper i have asked a author something and they would not have responded back within two weeks time so this makes me believe though it's a state of art but we can fairly in uh, four months of time have a good grasp of these things uh this brings me to a closure on uh telling how this will work so for me it's one and half hour every saturday however these are a little involved topics so it would also require some constant work from your end uh four to five hours through week roughly an hour or half an hour any given day is what i think is the best way to go about it go through the materials which i sent and this will prepare you right for the next week it will help you understand the topics which i'm going to cover in much easier way and of course as i said each of these fields are very deep i will not attempt to cover it the entire depth of any topic so you will have to spend some time of your own to uh, take that dive into understanding any topic a little deeper however i will uh, try to cover every topic to a level where you can understand machine learning and apply these uh with this i wanted to welcome all of you to at the start of this journey this is a rigorous program 
there will be a lot of challenges because i understand most of your working saturday sundays are the only two days you get and of that you are dedicating some of your time so these challenges might be your personal problems your academic problems if you are studying or professional problems if you are at work but uh, just remember that this is a you know our close group of people you i am always there to support you should be able to support each other i think it should be i i'll try my best to make it a fun next four weeks uh, we are coming close to this session the next part of this session the next half an hour the link for which i have already shared with you would be a question answer if any one of you has any question on how we are going to do this if you have any uh, suggestions inputs i'll open that pro, that second part of the link to have a quick chat on what is your expectation out of this and what is that you really want out of this program how do you want me to do is that fine enough yes yeah yes okay so yes, i will end this session now i will open the next session exactly at 130 i'll see you all there thank you so much for your time thank you okay thank you thanks for it thank you thank you thank you thank you